Razor Turbo S. Sick. Hey everyone, it's Adrenaline Junkie. Thanks for checking out another video. This one's obviously a little bit different than the uh, ones you're used to seeing. We're not on the trail. We're here at the 2018 Toronto International Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show in Toronto, Ontario at the International Center. We got a good chance to uh, spend the weekend at the show with our main sponsors, Royal Distributing. This gave us a chance to check out all the new machines coming up for 2019. And I figured why not show you guys the machines as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through all the main side-by-side -side models that I'm interested in and that are part of our group mostly. Uh, mostly the flagship models and I'll share all the cool video with you and maybe a few of my thoughts and then uh, we can discuss the machines in the comments section. You can let me know what you think. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Check us out on Facebook and give us a thumbs up. Also, if you're interested in picking up some of that sweet custom Team AJP swag we just released, please make sure you check out our Shopify store and help us support the channel. What a wicked looking machine! Hey guys, we're just here at the Toronto Snowmobile Power Sports and ATV Show, or whatever I, the name of this place is, it's confusing. But the important part is we're standing next to a brand new Polaris Razor Turbo S. Yeah, baby. 70 inches or 72, what is it? 70, I think, 70 or 72 inches wide. Heavy duty ARs from the factory, sexy front end. They've done a lot of cool cosmetic changes and a lot of mechanical upgrades and changes from the regular turbo model. Uh, this is competition to the, the Can-Am XRS model, so the wider, bigger version. It's got the dynamic suspension from Fox with the live valve system. It's got servo motors in there, automatically adjusting suspension. It is so sweet. Um, this is a wicked machine. Quite honestly, it doesn't have too, too many changes from my 2017 Polaris Razor Turbo or from a 2018 Polaris Razor Turbo, but some notable changes are definitely the 32-inch tires that comes with stock. Nice uh, ITP Coyotes. Wicked. It's got a lot of other upgrades, like the dynamic suspension is cool. Uh, obviously the wider wheelbase, the interior has been revamped and it's sexy. Check out that gauge cluster. Finally, Polaris has stepped it up with some nice analog made with the digital. It's got the drive command, all your suspension settings for the dynamics are on there. You got the wicked, wicked gauges. Um, the interior is nice. Uh, it's got the same seats pretty much as, as the other Razors. I mean, uh, the power output is the same, I believe, at 168 horsepower, but it does have a bigger differential. It's got bigger A-arms in the front, bigger radius rods in the rear, a super cool Sparco steering wheel. First time sitting in one of these, that wheel is badass though. I gotta get one of these wheels for my, uh, for my 2017 model. Because mine's kind of actually showing some signs of wear. Yeah, it's a really neat machine. I mean, um, it's a few grand more than the regular turbo model. Um, if your trails can fit this kind of a machine, then it's definitely worth something worth considering. It's probably worth the extra few grand. Um, a big problem from my perspective is my machine's already really big and really wide for a lot of the trails that we ride on, like you guys seen in the videos. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really love this thing. I really love the changes that they've done to the interior, even though there's not many of them. Uh, the styling changes are pretty cool. I really love this front grille setup. Uh, rumor has it that this front clip does fit on my 2017. Uh, I don't even want to imagine what the cost of this must be though. Here we have an optional mount for a front facing camera. They've got the, the smoked out lights here. I'd love to get a set of lights like this for my Razor. A lot of these components transfer between the various models. Right away you see an arch heavy duty A-arm on the front of these, which you don't get on uh, the base models. And Polaris has finally given you a front toe location, even though it looks a little crappy and cheap. It's still good enough to get you out of a bind. Uh, wicked machine. Um, yeah, make sure you go to your local Polaris dealer and check one of these things out. I can't wait to try one of these. I hear, I hear they ride even better than my machine, and, and I mean, I've been impressed with how well that thing rides. Uh, another difference between my model and this one is the cage. The cage is a little different on this. It's got a different type of curve to it. It's slightly more aggressive. Uh, it's got like, reinforcement bars in here. It's really neat. I want, I'm wondering if like uh, the cage would actually bolt onto mine, because that would be a pretty cool upgrade. Also, the rear end is being revamped. I've got kind of mixed opinions on it. I like the tail lights, but I don't know how I 
feel about this third tail light. I think they look kind of weird. Um, I mean, they'll probably grow on me. Like I mentioned earlier, bigger radius rods, slightly different control arms. Obviously the axles and the radius rods and stuff like that will be different because this is a wider model. Um, everything's beefed up. The spindle assemblies are bigger. A lot of the joints have been improved from the factory uh, the, to um, handle all these uh, bigger tires, the 32s. And like that suspension is just, just awesome looking. So um, yeah, I mean, no, not huge, huge, huge changes, but definitely quite a bit of upgrades from the previous model. Uh, I would be happy if one of these showed up in my garage. <laughs> I don't like how it's all open. I, I 
hate the fact that there's no storage space for anything. You can't even, you can hardly put a cooler on there. So if you're doing trail riding and stuff like that, you're gonna have a hard time packing your gear in and out. Uh, in comparison to like a, a, a Razor or some of the older Can-Am models, stuff like that. The X3 also lacks a lot of storage space in the rear. But uh, if you check out the rear end, it's nice and solid. Nice aggressive stance. Cool looking machine. I really like how it looks in the blue as well. So in the past, I've been accused of being a little hard on the YXC. A lot of you guys that have been watching our videos for a while probably remember the first gen YXC we took out trail riding. We destroyed that thing, it just didn't do well on the technical trails. Yamaha has reduced the gearing in this machine, so it is lower geared now. They've done a lot of other changes. They've got nice dual rate suspension on it, or dual rate springs. Um, the styling is very similar to what it used to be, but they have refined it around the edges. They've moved the radiator to the rear of the unit to help with cooling, and it stops it from getting packed full of mud and dirt when you're racing or trail riding. They've got that wicked three-cylinder engine, and it's still producing great power through that direct drive transmission. So even though in the past I may have been a little hard, it's mostly because I don't think this machine is as well-rounded as some of the other machines like the Can-Am Maverick X3 or the Polaris Razor XP. So, in that being said, I don't hate this machine. If I had to buy a second machine, it would be a YXZ hands down. But if I can only have one, I'm going to have to get a well-rounded unit, like the Polaris Razor, which I have right now. If I had to choose something else, it would probably be an X3. Before we leave uh, the Yamaha booth behind, we can't leave out the Wolverine. You guys have seen uh, a Wolverine in a bunch of our videos, and a lot of you guys have commented that it actually does a lot better than you'd expect it to. This is the new Wolverine X2, and in the background there, you'll see a Wolverine X4 four-seater. Um, they've definitely done a, a nice job cleaning up the styling on the newer Wolverine. It's got a nice clean interior setup. Like a lot of the other models, a lot of the things run through the center here. It's got a cool center console for storage. The Wolverine is a good trail machine. You're not going to get the top end, that high speed. You're not going to get that jump ability and, and, and just like the crazy power and, and handling that you will out of some of the more sport models. But it's a great machine uh, if you're on a budget and if you mostly trail ride. like we just showed you before, but definitely worth considering, like I said, especially if you're a trail rider. So the Yamaha YXC and the Wolverine are the two Yamaha machines that I really think appeal to the kind of riding we do. You've seen the Wolverine on the trail, you've seen it do well on the trails. The YXC we had in the past struggled a bit. Personally, I'd really love to see a Yamaha YXC 1000 with a CVT transmission mated to it. I think that would be really cool. Here you see the four-seater in a really nice blue, and this thing would probably do quite well on the trails, just like its little brother, the two-seater. We're gonna wander over to the Honda booth now. Like the Yamaha YXC, the Honda Pioneer does not use a belt-driven CVT. It uses a direct-drive transmission, which gives you that, that which gives you that arguably awesome like Honda reliability. A lot of Honda boys will say, I can't argue that. Runs a paddle shifter design similar to the Yamaha YXZ, so uh, they are cool units. Also, more of like a sport utility model rather than a pure sport itself. Honda has come out with the new Talon, which is a sport model. I'm not sure if they're gonna have one here though, so we'll take a look at the Pioneer one. Here we got the Pioneer 1000. This is the five seater version. You can see them demonstrating the seats in the back, they're pretty cool. It gives you seats underneath the bed. So you can still go out on the weekend, ride with the boys, right. and during the week you can still do your farm work or your utility work like you need to. Here we have the regular uh, Pioneer. This is one with a bench seat in it. If you look at the dash, it's a lot more of like an agricultural uh, kind of layout. Looks a little more uh, rough and rugged around the edges. The styling's just not there like in some of the other models. That's not to take away from, from the reliability of this machine. These are great trail machines. They'll go just about anywhere on the trail your other machines will go, especially with the right driver. Now we're at the John Deere booth here. I can't say I know much about these. Um, not really my cup of tea in the sense of uh, performance uh, trail riding. Um, if, you're, if you're a farmer that still wants to have some fun or, or if you need this for work, then I'm sure a lot of 
these machines can go a lot of places with the right driver. I used to have a lot of fun playing around in a Gator. I mean, I mean, it, the key is to get out there and ride. If this is all you got, then this is free. Uh, behind us, we got a really cool model here. I mean, this is all cabbed in. It's an XUV835. I mean, it, they're neat machines. The interior is by no means are ugly. I mean, these are really refined. But you can tell that this is predominantly a work vehicle, but it can still offer you a lot of fun on the weekend. I like that there's air conditioning. Yeah, it's got air conditioning, it's got heat. This is this is definitely like more of a car type feel. Um, I don't know, I mean, I'd love to take a machine out like this on our trails and see how it does. I mean, you can't expect it to do everything a, a Razor Turbo does, but I'm sure it would do 80% of it. And if the, if the Wolverine can handle a lot of those trails, I don't see why some of these John Deere models could. So if we look across there, we've got uh, Cup Cadet, which is supposed to make cheap lawnmowers. Used to make good lawnmowers, in my opinion, sold out. Went overseas with all their production, like a lot of companies have. And now they're producing these rebranded Chinese side-by-sides. I'm not going to talk crap about them, but they're not made for guys like us. If you're watching our channel, that is not the machine for you. Um, you can't expect this to go much more than, I don't know, it's like a golf cart on steroids, in my opinion. It's it's maybe okay for the golf course, but I mean, uh, uh, that's all I would put it at. I don't want to go into too much detail. I don't know the specs on these really, but just looking at them, looking at the frame designs, yeah, they're just really behind the times. It's more of a, they're trying to win you over with their price point and their looks, but you're not going to get the quality, you're not going to get the aftermarket, you're not going to get the capability of some of the bigger brands. Uh, over here, over here, we've got the Suzuki booth. Suzuki doesn't really offer a side-by-side -side even. They're still stuck in the past with some of their king quads and stuff like that. Um, they've really kind of just lagged behind the competition for the last few years, and they don't really have anything to offer. I'm focusing on side-by-sides here because that's mostly what we do. So there's not really even to talk, much to talk about in regards to Suzuki, so we'll just move on. Ah, didn't see me, did you? <laughs> so we've made our way to the Kawasaki booth now. Uh, we're looking at a Kawasaki Terex two-seater right now. Um, I've always liked the Kawi Terex. Um, also, it's more of a utility sport machine. But um, I started ATVing on a Kawasaki, and I've always had a little bit of a sweet spot in my heart for the Kawi lineup. I've always liked the way they sound. I've always liked the fact that they're built really tough. They're built by they have tough frames. They're, they're they're maybe a little heavier sometimes built than some of the other machines, but I just, I don't know, I, I, I've always appreciated them. Um, the Terex is a solid unit, it does well on the trails. I've been wanting to get a machine like this out on the trails with us for quite some time now. I just, it doesn't seem like anyone in our group has one or has the urge to get one at the time being. Uh, I know a lot of you guys ask in the videos, why don't you have a Terex? Why don't you have like a, a, a Honda Pioneer? Unfortunately, the, the, the group is made up of just what the guys buy, and right now it seems to be predominantly Can-Am Mavericks and Polaris Racers. Is it because they're the best? That's not the right answer. Maybe they're just the best suited at what we do and the way we like to do it, but uh, that's not to take away from this unit. The styling is completely different. It's not as refined as a, as a Polaris Racer. It's not as refined as a Can-Am X3. Um, but the budget that you're getting this on is a little different. And uh, it also it also offers things that like a sport model, like a Razor Turbo or, or an X3 don't offer. I mean, it's got a tow capacity. It's got a dump box. Now, if you come over here, we got a really sleek looking four-seater model, orange and black. It looks popping. It's a nice four-seater. You can take the whole family. You got plenty of room in the back for your coolers and your gear or your barbecue. Um, it'll go just about anywhere on any trail the other machines will go. I mean, if the Wolverine can get there, there's no reason the Terex can't get there. And there's no reason, uh, I mean, pretty much you eat like Honda, the Yamahas, they're, they're all capable. It all comes down at the end of the day to the rider. Just how I always say the reliability of a machine usually comes down to the guy riding it and how he's maintaining it. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's no argument. This is a cool looking machine. Uh, a buddy of ours has a first gen Terex with a long arm lift kit on it. Uh, it's a pretty cool machine. We haven't had him out with us for quite some time, but I'd love to see one of these out on the trail. Um, the local dealer I deal with is a Kawasaki dealer as well. For a while, I've been contemplating maybe getting a demo unit and, and taking it out and seeing how it does. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if, if this is what you're after, then I'd say 
honestly, this is probably one of the better choices for, uh, for a side-by-side -side machine. It's got the nice Fox shocks in there. They've done quite a few improvements over the years too with the suspension and the drivetrain. Um, once again, you gotta remember, this is a utility machine and a sport machine. So you can't compare it to like just a, a, a Razor Turbo because that's apples to oranges and this one is literally orange like an orange. <laughs> So if you're out shopping for a side-by-side, -side, don't write off the Terex. The Kawasaki Terex 2-seater and 4-seaters are good, solid, and reliably built machines. They've been around for quite a while. A friend of mine has a first-generation Terex with a long-arm lift kit and a big bore kit in it, and it's been a great machine. They're quite capable, and a cool thing about the Terex is it has a pretty strong cult following and a constantly evolving aftermarket. The aftermarket support for these machines is growing, and with some suspension modifications and a few other performance mods, these turn into really, really capable machines that are quite reliable in comparison to many other units. So, with that being said, it might not be the sportiest machine out there, but it offers a lot in every department. You get the utility, you get the reliability, you get the sport, and you get a decent looking machine with a solid aftermarket. So make sure to go check out your Cowie dealer if you're shopping for a new unit. So we're wandering away from the Cowie booth. Here we got the classic, the Cowie Mule. I mean, pretty much arguably one of the first side-by-sides. That didn't really start it from a sport perspective, but definitely an agricultural and like an industrial perspective. The Mule is a great machine. Over here, we've got a, uh, we've got Kubota's offering, which they call the RUV. Um, and it's, it's, it's also a machine that you can easily take on the trail and, and do some light trail riding with, but work with it all week and during the weekend on your farm or on your industrial, uh, whatever you do for industry. I mean, it's obviously set up for a crew of guys, but it's got four by four. They come in diesel as well. So they're really neat units. A buddy of mine has one on his farm, and you know what? They actually go a lot of places if you hit the throttle hard enough. So I mean, uh, it all depends on, on what you want to do. It, it can definitely take you out on the trail on the weekend and still have a good time. It's just not suited for the type of riding we usually do. We're mostly recreational sport riders. So uh, that's not really a machine built for us. Over here we've got uh, the beautiful uh, Chinese lineup of CF Moto, Chung Fang, um, as they call it. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Uh, we test drove, we test drove the 1000. It's not terrible. It's like I explained in the video. It's it's a specific demographic of machines for a specific type of rider. It's just not something that we use that our group rides in. The warranty support, the fact that there's hardly any aftermarket, and the build quality of these machines are just not up to par when you compare them to a Kawasaki, a Polaris, a Can Am, and a Honda and stuff like that. They're just in a different class of machine, and uh, we're not really going to dive into them because I, I, I don't find it a comparison. I classify them in the same group as Cub Cadet and Hyson. Just not, you get what you pay for at the end of the day, and, and CF Moto isn't a company that has much R&D, isn't a company that's built on a race bread heritage. They're simply taking something, making it look like the rest of the competition, and marketing it in that matter, but they don't actually, they don't actually perform the way they look. It's kind of like in the car world, you'd call it all, all show, no go. Uh, and that's kind of the way I classify the CF Moto brand. I'm not hating, I'm just being realistic. You can't compare them, they're on a different level. We got the MBRP booth here. Uh, big shout out to those boys. They've been supporting me along the way for the last little while. I'm rocking their exhaust systems with good results. Uh, if you're looking for a cool sounding system for your machine, make sure you check them out for your ATV, side-by-side, -side, or your snowmobile. Hey guys, so we've made our way to the elusive Textron off-road and hard cat booth. And over here we've got the Textron Wildcat XX. It's uh, Textron's new sport offering, supposed to be competing with the Razor and the Maverick. It's a pretty cool looking machine. It's got nice styling. But um, it's running the Yamaha power plant, so it's got the same engine as the Yamaha YXZ, but instead of being mated to a direct drive transmission, it's mated to a CVT belt drive. So it's a little bit different, especially with the power layout and how it functions. Uh, visually, it's a pretty cool machine. I mean, a lot of people like it. I kind of, I'm not really sold on it. Um, I think the rear end looks kind of funny. Um, I've never been a huge Articat fan. We have a couple Wildcats in the booth, or I mean not in the booth, but in, in the group. And they do pretty well. You guys have seen that Wildcat 700 Sport doing a lot of trail riding with us with no issues. Uh, the green and black one. And uh, there's been a lot of comments on the videos of people being surprised at how well it works. And I'm one of those people. It really has shocked me because I used to 
be a little biased against Articat. Um, I raced one of these at that first race I did. Uh, that's in the videos on the channel. And um, realistically, I mean, off the line, stuff like that, the Razor Turbo is much faster. The Can-Am X3 is faster. Um, but, I mean, this thing's pretty sweet too. It's running, uh, the new ones here are running the Fox suspension. Uh, we're gonna work our way over to their Havoc model in a minute. And I believe the Havoc model is actually running King coilovers. Um, they've definitely stepped it up from what it used to be, but it's still, uh, it still needs a bit of work. So uh, once these people get out of there, we'll go inside and we'll we'll take a look at the styling on the inside and compare it to, to the other machines. Let's get a look from the front here. Go to the new one. looks interesting. I still think it looks like a little squish. So it's got pretty heavy duty front end here by the looks of it. Those A-arms look beefy. So the interior is, uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it, it leaves a little bit to be desired in my opinion. Uh, and the seats are terrible. I just, I don't like the way I feel in them. They're just not very comfortable. Um, I find like there's like a ton of lower back and then like you, I just, I don't know how to explain it, but the seating position in this machine is weird. I, I much prefer the Polaris uh, followed by the Can-Am X3. And many times we've said that the X3 is a little low and you don't get the good visibility like you do in a racer. So the problem with this thing is, I can't even see the front wheels when I stick my head out. Like, I can't see the rear or the front really. They've covered it all with the fender, and it makes it really tough for trail riding to see where you're going and where that front wheel is lining up to try to position yourself. Uh, the dash, I mean, it leaves a little bit to be it leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, a lot of empty space. A lot of empty space. It's just it's just uh, cheap looking. Um, but I mean, that's not to say it's a bad machine. I, I'd love to get a chance to trail ride one and get one out on our trails and really see what it's like uh, before I really make my judgment call on it. My first impressions on it are that Textron has brought something to the table that, that may be able to compete or at least hold up with the rest of the machines. <laughs> the rear uh, suspension setup is odd. It's got these weird looking uh, trailing arms in it. So um, maybe we'll work our way over to the Havoc model if we can find it. The Havoc is here. So this is their Prowler. This is like their utility model with the full cab on it. Um, I don't see a Havoc honey. If you look behind us, uh, I mentioned them earlier. Uh, you got Heisen there. In my books, Heisen is classified with CF Moto and Cup Cadet. They're simply a offshore rebranded machine. There is no real true R&D in those machines from the company's perspective. They're basically just taking a product and marketing it with a few twists to the plastics. If you come over here, I believe these machines are actually assembled in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, but they're shipped in from China. It's just, it's cheap. It's a budget machine. Will it take you down the trail and get you out there and have a good time? Probably. Is it going to do it reliably to the same level that a, a Can-Am, a Polaris, or a, a, a Textron unit will? Definitely not. It's just, you can't compare it. If you look at the control arm, stuff like that. We just showed you the control arms on like the, um, on the Wildcat there. You saw how big they were, the suspension, everything. It's just a different caliber of machine. Uh, you can't really compare it to the big names in the market. It's definitely an entry level product on a budget, made for a different type of rider, not specifically for what we like to do. The last stop on the list is obviously gonna be Can-Am. So we're gonna work our way over to the Can-Am booth. And uh, as you guys know, most of our videos are based either on the Polaris Razor platform or the Can-Am platform. Over here, we've got the Can-Am booth. Our sled lineup, and we're gonna work our way over to the side-by-sides over here. It looks like they have a brand new Can-Am Maverick Sport here as well. It's a machine I haven't really checked out yet, but it's really high on my list of things to uh, look at. I'd love to try one. So here we have the Maverick Sport. I believe it's a 60-inch model. I really like the way 
it's set up in the rear. Look at that, look at that departure angle. The tires and everything sticks out way back here. Great for uh, departure angles, off seat drops. Here we have the trail model, the 50 inch model of the Maverick. That's comparable to the 50 inch uh, Razor we have in the group, the Razor Trail. I'm hoping one of the guys in the group pick off like a sport or something like that. It would be really cool to see how this compares against a, uh, a Razor 900S or a Razor 1000S. People have been waiting for Can-Am to release a 60-inch sport model version of the Maverick. I'm one of them. You guys all know that I'm a big fan of the 60-inch sport models. Until now, it's evident that the 900S and the 1000S Razors have been dominating this segment of the market, so it's really going to be cool to see what kind of a ripple the Can-Am Maverick Sport can put in there. I really think they're bringing a lot to the table here and will easily be able to compete with the Razor models. The suspension setup and everything looks awesome. This is going to be a really badass trail machine. I can't wait to see it go head to head against other machines on the trail soon. So now we'll make our way over here. Here we've got the Canyon Maverick XMR. It's a 1000. We just got one of those in our group right now. Uh, our buddy Henry who had the Maverick Max 4 seater that you guys saw below the tranny in one of the last videos recently upgraded to the Canyon Maverick XMR. This is a mean looking machine. The way you see it is the way it comes. It comes with all these crazy tires. It's set up for mud. It's got slightly lower gearing. Uh, this is the turbo model. I believe it also comes in an NA model that's not turbocharged. Just like the X3 Maverick comes in a turbo and a non-turbo application. So the inside of this machine is pretty darn look cool looking. It's got a nice interior. The seating position of these is definitely a lot different than the Razor. I'm gonna get in here. You got a way better view of the front here than you did in the Wildcat and the back. But generally speaking, the rear visibility on this is brutal, especially when you look at the fact that it comes with these cool snorkels. I mean, they're super sweet, but you can't see what's behind you. There's a lot of attention to this model here today. Uh, you got the OEM snorkel set up here. It's really cool. This is a mud machine. Uh, the nice aggressive tires. table with their XMR edition machines has always been awesome. All the XMR models are forces to be reckoned with, whether it's a Renegade or an Outlander ATV. The previous XMR Mavericks were great, but this thing just really steps it up. This thing is a beast. The way it's set up from the factory is just unreal. It looks awesome and it performs awesome. Like I said, we have one in our group now, so I can't wait to really get some more 
uh, on-trail footage of the machine and see how it does. These aren't just mud machines. They do excellent on the trail and they do really well everywhere they go. Um, I'm a big fan of the regular Maverick X3 as well as the X3 Turbo. I think the XRS is also a wicked machine. Everything in the X3 platform is a force to be reckoned with. These machines really give the Razor Turbo a run for their money. The X3 Turbo and the Razor Turbo are very evenly matched machines. Basically that concludes like a little synopsis of most of our, our you know, our higher end and our more popular side-by-side -side models that we've been able to see at the show here. Make sure you guys check out our other riding videos so that you can see how these things get abused on the trails and how they really work when you compare them side-by-side. -side. So follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, make sure you subscribe to both this channel, Adrenaline Junkie Prod, and our projects channel adrenaline junkie projects so that you can stay up to date with all our uploads in the future thanks for watching see you in the next video thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you'd like to get some cool swag to wear out with your friends on the trail and show everyone how much you love off-roading check out our new shopify store where you can get some custom t-shirts as well as some cool stickers also if you'd like to support the channel in the videos in another way become a patreon and check out our patreon account please subscribe to both our channels and follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. Also, take a moment and check out some of our supporters' websites. A lot of these videos wouldn't be possible without them.